High in the Sierra Mountains, just outside of Yosemite National Park, is the home of Sierra Online, the creator of the world's greatest interactive fiction. Once again, Sierra is breaking new ground with one of the most captivating, challenging, and intense interactive stories ever created. Gabriel Knight, Sins of the Fathers, is a psychological suspense story of one man's desperate search to safeguard his future by unraveling his past. A generations-old voodoo curse haunts Gabriel's sleep and threatens his very life. Gabriel's search into the roots of voodoo, combined with the images of his own nightmares, provide the keys to unlock the curse and save his very existence. Game designer Jane Jensen and a team of programmers, artists, animators, musicians, cinematographers, actors, and other specialists have spent over a year creating this incredible adventure. Come, join us behind the scenes for an inside look at the making of Gabriel Knight. Jane began the Gabriel Knight project immediately following her work as co-designer and writer for King's Quest VI, which was the best-selling computer game of 1992. For Jane, Gabriel Knight was a true labor of love. Well, I, I came to see her online because I really loved adventure games. Um, my first one was King's Quest IV, and I loved the medium the way it was. I love puzzles of all kinds, and I like the, I like the graphics. Um, but as a writer, when I came here, I kind of got inspired thinking about um, how far this medium could go. The seer was already at that point changing a lot of its direction, and I feel very strongly that this medium can be as powerful of entertainment as any film or any book or any you know, comic or whatever medium you have, and I don't think that, um, I try not to limit my thinking about the powerful nature of the story because it's a computer game. I think that we can make computer games that are just as good as any other form of, of entertainment. With Gabriel Knight, Jane also pioneered a number of changes to the familiar Sierra game interface. Uh, we get letters from people saying they think that uh, the game assumes too much it assumes that they want to pick up something when they click the hand on it where they may have been trying to open it. Um, so I, I wanted to try to keep the point and click and the icons, you know, the visuals instead of words and, and introduce a little bit more freedom of action. That and the dialogue trees are, are the way we've done that with Gabriel Knight. I think it's made it a very difficult game. Um, but I hope that people will take a little time to get used to it. An experienced team of artists and animators transformed Jane's vision into the game's distinctive style and appearance. Lead illustrator John Schrodes created an overall art design that borrows from the dark look of film noir, combined with the distinctly stylistic appearance of graphic novels. We use the graphic novel as an influence for the cut panel format to bring out climaxes in the storyline. A talented team of artists created over 80 breathtaking original background illustrations and scores of cut panel and dream sequence pictures. Like the sets of a motion picture, they create the backdrop for the incredible world of Gabriel Knight. Lead animator Michael Hutchison harnessed an arsenal of animation tools and techniques. Over 2,000 individual animations and dozens of cinemagraphic and cut panel sequences were created. The resulting game visuals define new standards for interactive adventures, giving Gabriel Knight the look and feel of a motion picture production. Well, one of the things that we were really excited about when we started work on Gabriel was uh, the opportunity to really make it visually any way that we wanted to. It's the first in the series, and we weren't uh, locked into any particular style with this game. We could 
uh, we could have the the cut panel um, sequences of stills and then animate those in comic books fashion. Uh, we could have video capture, we could have 3D studio, we could composite all of these different mediums into one um, and, and really get some pretty exciting effects, I think. The programming team integrated the graphics, animations, cinemagraphic sequences, user interfaces, puzzles, dialogue, narration, sound effects, and music, creating the final game. The main challenge for us is the, uh, the, more, the movie-like quality that we can attain with the CD game. Previously, we would have uh, dialogues would always be in text, and the action would basically stop. Now we have the talking going on while the action is going on, and synchronizing those two things is a new experience for me, but it really gives the game an extra flavor. Before, we took text-based games and turned them into CD games, so we really got a text-based game on a CD. Now we have a truly CD-oriented game. The musical soundtrack has always been a distinctive element of Sierra games, and Gabriel Knight is no exception. Game producer and musician Bob Holmes composed an enthralling soundtrack of original music that sets the mood and adds depth and dimension to the world of Gabriel Knight. My background really is in film scoring, and I tend to really levitate to a lot of the old style uh, Max Steiner kind of film scoring in which using a theme is much more valuable than texture. Um, one of my goals for Gabriel was to latch on to a few really strong themes and then use those in different ways. Gabriel was a great vehicle for music because of the, the texture and the darkness and the tone. Um, it just gave me a lot of rich things to work with. The musical score is augmented by hundreds of realistic sound effects. This brings a cinematic scope to the game's soundtrack and adds life, energy, and believability to the game-playing experience. I really don't want to be dead. Can we try that again? Perfect. The compelling characters that were created for Gabriel Knight took on a whole new dimension thanks to the star-studded cast of Hollywood veteran actors enlisted by Sierra to provide their voices. About Detective Mosley. The Hollywood Reporter proclaimed that Gabriel Knight is the first time an all-Hollywood cast of name actors has been assembled for an interactive movie. Veteran Hollywood producer, director, writer, and performer Stuart M. Rosen signed on to cast and direct the voiceover actors. Rosen has directed hundreds of hours of animation voiceovers and on-camera television. He has been honored with scores of awards, including 10 Emmys. Gabriel Knight absolutely measures up and is far and above a number, in fact, I'd say most things that I've done, um, in many ways. You know, obviously it's a different form. It's not, it's not quote, a film, and it's not a television series or a half-hour um, or an hour um, special. So it's, it's different. It's a different form. But um, it's, it's, I think it's outstanding. I'm very proud of it. I want everybody to see it. With nearly 7,500 lines of dialogue and narration covering all the possible paths the player could follow, this project was the equivalent of directing voiceovers for five full-length animated feature films. Gabriel Knight was Rosen's second collaboration with Sierra. He also directed Robbie Benson and others for the CD-ROM version of King's Quest VI. Drachen means dragons. I wonder if Mosley would know he was being insulted if I called him Drachenbreath. Tim Curry is among Hollywood's most talented and versatile actors. Using his sensuous masculine voice, Curry created a distinctive personality for the title character of Gabriel Knight. This is a newspaper clipping about a murder committed in 1810. That murder is an exact match of the voodoo murders right down to the marks around the bodies. Tim Curry as Gabriel Knight. It's kind of an interesting story. We were trying to cast